So hello, for our project, um, we made a masterminder. And my name is Leah and I'm a mechanical engineering major. My name is Giovanni and I'm also a mechanical engineering major. Hi, my name is Chloe and bio I am biomedical engineering major. Uh, my name is Alondra and I'm also doing biomedical engineering major. So nowadays wearing a mask is mandatory due to COVID-19, but sometimes we come across with the problem of keep forgetting our mask. And our solution to the problem was to create a, remind, a reminder that whenever we open the door of the main entrance or exit, the phone will receive a notification to not forget your mask. Using the material listed on the next slide and IFTTT, a free online service that allows one to create applets, which will complete certain tasks, we will receive a notification. Uh, can you pass it? Oh, okay. The material we used were the TI Instruments Launchpad, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Launchpad, Wi-Fi model, <laughs> I'm sorry, Wi-Fi model and the Buster Pack. Also to sense when the door was, uh, is open, we used the magnetic read switch uh, and the ESP8266 wireless sensor. The, the, our first step to the uh, flow diagram was to create and connect the IFTTT applet and that will serve to ultimately send the notifications to our phones. The next step will be upload the code to the ESP and MSP board that will connect to the Wi-Fi network and then set, uh, set the buzzer as an interrupt on the MSP uh, 432 and establish a connection between both of them using the MSP IP address. Then the ESP is set to read the status of the magnetic read switch mounted on the doors. When the door is open, the switch status will change and the ESP board will relate this event to the MSP board. After that, after, uh, after opening the door and changing the status, this will activate an, inter an interrupt, or in this case, the buzzer, and this will act as a trigger causing the MSP board to then connect to the EF IFTTT web server. Uh, our final step will be we will, well, our result will be to receive a notification on our phone from the IFTTT app. And then we have, um, I'm sorry. So we have the first image, which is the ISVP and the buzzer connected. The second picture, we have the magnetic switch, the board with the, um, I'm sorry. Uh, with the ESP board. And then we have the TI, um, the, the TI uh, instruments launchpad. So for our results, so as Alondra said, we first created an applet on IFTTT and we used webhooks as the service and we created the event masterminder as the trigger. Um, so basically to summarize what happens is when the switch status changes, so the door opens, the ESP board will send that information to the MSP board. Um, and then the MSP board will then um, uh, create a buzzer and this will notify the IFTTT applet and it'll send a notification, don't forget a mask to our phone. Um, throughout our project, we also found that it was important to know the difference between a web server and a web client. So we created two separate codes and one was on Arduino and the other on Energia. So our code on Arduino uploaded onto the ESP board and this was considered a web client because um, it took the information from the read switch uh, disconnecting and it sent that information to the MSP board and then our code on Energia uploaded onto the MSP board. And it started off as a web server because it was in listen mode, listening to what the ESP board, um, the information that was taking. And so then once it took in that information um, from the ESP board, it processed it. And then in the other half of our code, the MSP board acted as a web client, sending all the information that it took 
to the IFTTT server, again, allowing the notification to be sent to our phone. And then this is just a short video. time in ramp my team and i work with a company called abiomed abiomed is a company that works on medical devices they made the world's smallest hot pump called impeller which takes about three to four weeks to be made the impeller pumps blood by drawing blood out of the heart and pumping into the aorta. it is planted into the left side of a patient's heart in our time working with abiomed we talked about false forms of communication, which involve verbal, nonverbal, visual, and written communication. When communicating verbally, you should stop, think about what you're going to say, and listen to the other person then reply. Nonverbal communication, showing videos, images, graphs would be beneficial. Visual communication, facial expressions, body language, and eye contact will also be beneficial. Written, con written communication, read what you wrote, read it again, then reply. So all the people have, have you met, we focused on communication and teamwork. We discussed different types of communication and how we can communicate effectively. We can communicate using many different ty types of communication, whether it be virtual, online, or in person. And each form of communication is good at doing a different thing. Verbal communication is immediate and you can instantly respond to people and receive verbal acknowledgement. The online forms of communication, such as email, text messages, and social media, are effective in distributing detailed information, such as charts and pictures, and you can access them at any time and you can come back to them if you need to reference something. Communication also ties into teamwork. Each person on a team contributes something different and it is important to work as a team in order to achieve success. The chart shows stages in team development. The forming stage is where you have a lot of different ideas as a team and your performance starts off high. The storming stage is where you refine your previous ideas and settle on a goal and the performance goes down a little bit because there are conflicting ideas as to where your final goal should be. The norming and performing phases are where the group comes together and, and agrees upon a goal that they need to complete and the status and performance start to plateau. And the adjoining stage is the final phase and where the team finishes the task and reaches the end goal that they set at the beginning. Um, so we would like to thank the members of the Abiomed company. Um, thank you, Joanne, Alexis, Sonia, Amelia, Alex, Heather, Isabel, Tamara, and Caitlin. And then we'd also like to thank our mentor, Iman, and our professors, Professor Chandra and Professor Phillips.